The need for foster parents locally in North Carolina and all over the country has been unmet for years. Thompson Child and Family Focus is transforming lives through early childhood, family stability, and mental health services. No matter the situation of a child, you can come to Thompson for the training you need to serve them. Discover how you can be a foster parent and make a difference in a child's life. Go to thompsoncff.org or call 704-536-0377. From iHeart Podcasts, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case Roe v. Wade, starring Maya Hawke as 26-year-old lead attorney Sarah Weddington. We're challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee William H. Macy as Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. Listen to the podcast Supreme, the battle for Roe on the iHeart Radio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. It's me, Katie Couric. Did you know I have a newsletter called Wake Up Call that goes out six days a week? It has everything you need to know to start your day. The candidates to watch in 2024, my latest podcast interview with Michael J. Fox, the best things to eat for gut health, summer fashion trends, the truth about CBD, and so much more. Head to katiecouric.com. That's K-A-T-I-E-C-O-U-R-I-C.com to sign up. And I'll see you in the morning, just like old times. Hi, listeners. Welcome back. I'm Nedra Glover Tawab, and you need to hear this. This week, we'll be talking about romantic relationships, particularly when we have a relationship with someone that we want to protect, but there's some romantic interest there. You know, I think as as humans, we are attracted to many things about different people, and there are times where we have the ability to act on those things. And there are other times where we just need to notice it and be in the relationship with the person. Sometimes it's our boss, you know, it may be someone that you have a work relationship with, or it could be a really good friend and you just don't want to mess things up by getting in there and throwing, you know, romance into an already healthy situation. Throughout life, you know, when there are relationships with other people that we have that interest in, it's a really hard thing to decide if this is the opportunity to pursue or if it's just one to be aware of. So for today's caller, we'll be helping them with deciding how to manage those feelings of not acting on romance or a romantic relationship with someone. So let's get into today's call. Hello, and thank you for listening to my story. Over half a year ago, in a work cafeteria, I met a man that I really, really liked. And we really connected pretty much right away. And we stayed connected as friends for most of this time. We would spend time together without pushing each other into anything romantic, but there was always a sense that there was a possibility, there was like a promise for more, like that energy was just present in whatever it is that we were up to. And part of me was always wondering, why is it that we're not more than friends? But then I thought back to work and I and I was telling myself that we are friends because we want to be careful at work. We don't want to start anything that we're not sure about. So I just wanted to linger in that space of friendship, but maybe more than certain space for long enough for us to be confident in thinking that we want a relationship rather than a friendship. I wonder if this will be about enjoying someone's company without moving to the next level. I think of platonic relationships and how we're able to be our full selves, how we're able to show up you know, enjoy and delight without it being anything more than that. And there are times even in relationships where there may be some attraction that we need to keep it platonic for the safety and for the security of the other situations we may be in, such as work. And with that in mind, we have to focus on the platonic 
connection, not necessarily this needs to be more, but this is wonderful as it is. So it's really about managing that interaction. And then there's other times where the energy is so big and powerful that we must pursue it. But in this situation, it sounds like there's some energy there and it's questionable, right? It's like, is this something? Am I the person just feeling it? Is this other person feeling it on the other side? And time reveals, you know, what we need to do next. It can be very uncomfortable to be in that waiting period, but sometimes it is best to practice waiting and not doing anything until we know for sure. So let's keep listening. And so one day about five months into knowing each other, this man told me that he really, really likes me and I was overjoyed because naturally I felt the same. I felt a romantic attraction towards him and I was happy that that is mutual. But as soon as I told him that I like him too, and I really like him, not just for two weeks, but it's been ongoing and it's been serious and growing inside of me. He told me that he has been seeing this other person, this other girl he likes for the past two weeks, and he wanted to see how things go with her. I found it really jarring, and I could not understand the timing of him telling me about his feelings, like if he has every last bit of intention of seeing someone else. So I listened more and tried to be compassionate, and he told me that he likes me and he cannot hide it from me any longer, but he also wants to see how things go with the other girl, But then because he's been liking me for about half a year, five months or so, he wants to be rational about it. So perhaps the best course of action is to talk to the other girl and break things off with her and come back to me and really be with me. I hear some confusion on your part because on one end, he's saying, I know that I like you. And then there's this space where he's saying, I want to be open to this other Um, potential opportunity. When there is a friendship at stake, when there is this chemistry or energy with someone at stake, sometimes, you know, proceeding with caution just to make sure that you don't mess that up is a wonderful option, right? Like if you are dating your friend or you have a really good relationship with your friend, you don't want to ruin that. And so just being sure that this is the situation that you really want to be in and severing ties with these other things or maybe getting them out of your system, it sounds like that is the course of action that is making the most sense to him. Now with him being open, you know, he's being very clear. There is no trickery happening. He's being very clear. I like you and... I like this other person as well, and I want to see because I don't want to ruin what we have or what we could have because I'm continuing to pursue. It's confusing, but I also think it's a show of respect in some ways. And we can be into, you know, maybe more than one thing at a time. And I think the honesty here is something to admire in this situation. And also you have the opportunity to want the clarity and to want to be sure about this thing and to want to be chosen. Um, So let's keep listening because I wonder, you know, what's next for this relationship. I was so happy to hear that he'll call her and talk to her and be rational as he said about it so that you know i'm the more serious connection so therefore he's going to be with me that i decided to pay more attention assign more weight to the idea that he is attracted to me than to the fact that there's somebody else So a couple of days go by and I get a phone call from him and he tells me he decided not to call the other girl and to see where things go with her and instead to stay friends with me. I was seriously heartbroken. I felt rejected as a full person, but he told me he still likes me and he wants to spend time with me as a friend. 
So another month went by and we were spending time as friends. And I always got a sense that although he says we're spending time as friends, he still likes me as more than just a friend. And I never stopped liking him as more than just a friend either. So that created, again, the sort of energy that's been around for the first five months or so of us knowing each other. Now the water is getting murky. It sounds like there are lots of blurred boundaries in this friendship. So if you want to have a friendship where feelings have been expressed on one or both sides, it's always helpful to be very clear what the boundaries will be in the relationship. Perhaps we will only go out in a group setting. Perhaps we won't call each other after a certain time. Maybe the way that you physically connect with a person, the hugs, maybe the hug length, kissing, and you know these sorts of things need to be very clear so that there's no confusion. And it doesn't mean you can you know erase your feelings, but you can certainly change those behaviors so there's not any mixed messages. Because what I hear right now is, is there's a lot of mixed messaging going on, which is confusing for both of you. You know, I'm sure he's in this other relationship and he's thinking about this situation with you. And perhaps this is stopping you from pursuing any other relationship. So it's very unclear what role each of you have in this friendship. So a conversation around you know, the type of things we can talk about, our physical content, our emotional contact or, you know, content of our emotional conversations, even talking about the other people you're dating, being very clear on those things can help maintain the friendship. It may not, you know, transition you all towards not having feelings for each other, but at least it's clear what you can and cannot do within the friendship. Also, you know, when things start to get murky and, you know, feelings have been exchanged, it's okay to step back a little bit and just give the relationship some space so you can adapt to the changes that have been presented. So you can kind of recoup and, you know, gather yourself and you're not all in there, you know, the next day after these, you know, really tough things have been said, or maybe some mixed messages have been sent. Having the conversation that, you know, I really value this friendship as well. And what could be best for me right now is just to take a few days off, a week off. I need to sit with myself and figure out how we can proceed as friends. Protesters and supporters alike are lined up outside the United States Supreme Court this afternoon as a decision in the most hotly debated case in years is set to be delivered. From iHeart Podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case, Roe v. Wade. Sir, I graduated the top quarter of my class. We just, just don't have a spot for you. Starring Maya Hawk as 26-year-old lead attorney Sarah Weddington for challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee William H. Macy as Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. My chief qualification being I'm uncontroversial. You know how we both ended up on the Supreme Court? Politics. Damn right. This may be the longest of shots, but it's also the last chance for a lot of women. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. I'm trying to get you to stand for something, man. Now go to it. Listen to Supreme, the battle for Roe on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, I'm Sam Farber, the radio play-by-play broadcaster for the Charlotte Hornets, and it is my pleasure and privilege to invite you to check out the Hornets Hivecast, the official podcast of the Charlotte Hornets, available now on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. We take you inside the locker room for exclusive conversations with players like all-star guard LaMelo Ball. Pretty much I'm worried about just, just winning for real. Just going in, trying to get as much wins, taking it game by game. General Manager Mitch Kupchak. I think he's going to be 
really, really, really good here. And Hornets head coach Steve Clifford. And if we can get to that level and have a mentality of getting better and better and better, then we can be a factor. With new podcast episodes every day, we've got you covered on the Hornets Hivecast. Whether you want to hear from the top performers of a recent Hornets win or get caught up in time for tip-off tonight, check us out. A new episode just posted today on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So one time after a particularly good evening with him, I told him that I still like him as more than just a friend and I really want to date him and I'm really open to that if he is willing to to do that. And then within the next hour or so, he told me that he is still seeing the other person, that they are not entirely serious. They're just a situation ship, that they want radically different things. He wants a short-term monogamous relationship and she wants a long-term open relationship that they fight all the time, that they're very volatile, and she wants serious things from him before he's ready. But he has still seen her. He agreed to be with her and see how things go, but he has no certainty that this would last beyond, you know, the next few weeks at all. And he told me that, yes, this other girl is is with him on very uncertain terms, but he really, really likes me, and he knows that for sure with all his heart. He always, he has for a long time and he cares about me. Okay, whoa. As I continue listening to this, I'm hearing a big boundary violation here. Talking about your partner in a negative way to someone you're interested in. Wow. You know, I I think when people have affairs or if there is some cheating involved, that is like one of the big things that come up. You start to say these things about the person that you're with. Oh, they're not this or they're like this. And then the person who is interested in you starts to feel a way about this person you're partner with or, you know, how you're in this situation that you don't really want to be in. But let's look at what's happening. He's making a choice despite everything that's happening there to be in the relationship, despite the arguing, them wanting different things. He's making a choice to be in that relationship. And he's having some level of commitment there. There is some sort of agreement that they have, whether it's short-term, you know, monogamy or a long-term relationship. I'm not sure if they are even on the same page, but there is some commitment happening between the two of them. Because if the relationship was all bad, neither of them would want to be in it. So there is a piece of this, even though you're being told a story, there's a piece of this that you may not know about. So I'm I'm starting to hear someone who is wanting many things and perhaps you're a part of it and she is also a part of it and here is where you become this powerful being this powerful force you decide what type of relationship you want with a person who is not available to you do you want to pursue a relationship with someone who is not emotionally and physically available completely to you because it sounds like what you're seeking is not even what he's seeking. So we can sometimes like people and have energy with them and feel this chemistry and it's just not a good relationship match because what we ultimately want is something that we can't get from this person. He is presenting some things that I wonder how that would look in the future, even if you had this relationship with him, like this uncertainty he's presenting. Is this something you want to pursue in a relationship with him? Let's keep listening. And so he said he wants to spend a lot of time with me and he needs to talk to the other girl to see how to do that, how to balance things out. He wants to talk to the other person before spending a lot of time with me. And again, 
in all of that, I heard I really matter to him. I am a serious romantic connection. And she is, and he told me that in his own words, she is a situationship, not a relationship, nothing committed. And again, I was overjoyed because I felt like I really mattered to him. And he wants something more from me. And maybe he's breaking up with her. Or maybe not. But either way, she doesn't, she's not that important. So it went on. I was out traveling for the next 10 days. And he told me that when I'm away, he's going to talk to her. And by the time I get back, he, he's certainly going to have the answer for me. And I thought I have every reason to expect an affirmative answer because he told me that he's not serious about her and she is a little, they're very volatile and want radically different things. She's not that important to him. Oh, but she is. She's still in the picture. You know, any time that he's not with you, he's with her. So she is important. If he were being honest with her in this way about what she represents in his life, they would not have a relationship. So there is something being said that maybe, again, you know, I think you you may not know. I wonder if she knows about you. Does she know how important you are? Because she is important. She's still around. She's still in the picture. So that is a sign of her importance. If she was not important, she would not be present. My question for you is, do you want a non-monogamous relationship? Because this is shaping up to be a situation with this woman or, you know, perhaps someone in the future, a situation where monogamy is not going to be a condition of this relationship. We are, you know, able to make various choices about many things. And I I really appreciate that. I love being able to have food choices and, you know, activity choices. But there are times where we may be called to commit to one thing. And if that's what you want, if you want relationship commitment, you may not have to have commitment on a meal. Maybe you can have several things, but if you want relationship commitment, that's something that you'll have to advocate for. And it may not be in a situation where the other person doesn't want that. I'm hearing him being very clear. You know, sometimes we'll say, oh my gosh, I don't know what this person wants. They're not being clear with me. I hear him being very clear about wanting to be in both relationships. Are you listening? Are you willing to process what he's saying? Are you willing to behave differently when he is sending you a message you don't want to hear? So I come back and and we meet and he tells me that he decided she is a primary partner of his in a relationship that is likely or possibly long-term and open and that he still likes me and he still wants to go on dates with me because he still likes me and he always has. But all he can offer to me is an undefined relationship. I was extremely upset to hear that because in my mind for so long, I I thought that what we shared was something real, that I really mattered to him, that I was his serious romantic interest and that this other girl was the person he just meant to leave and he was just playing with or exploring or seeing how things go. But nothing much and and I asked him like how did he make that choice when all along I've been hearing that you know she's just there and strange and that their interactions don't amount to much and he said well we just got drunk and went dancing and I decided and I was so shocked that he made this this choice to be with the other partner and make her the primary partner for reasons that seem so arbitrary and 
he always struck me as a person who takes his relationship seriously. So to hear that felt like either not hearing the truth or hearing something that entirely shatters the image that I had of him. And either idea was extremely painful and I could not understand what to do with the information that, that I had. Believe what people do, not just what they say. This entire time that you've been talking to him, his behavior was not a reflection of what he was saying to you. We can think many things, but what's really important is how we show up in the world, how we behave, what we're acting on, what we are displaying to other people. You can tell someone all day, I am such a nice person. But if you're not behaving nicely, if you're not being kind to other people, if you're yelling and mean and all these things, your behavior doesn't reflect you being a nice person. Your words do. You know, we can say anything. We can say, I'm a great singer. I'm a great dancer. I'm a nice person. I am so open-minded. But if everyone just says stuff without doing it, it doesn't mean it's true. If you think you're an open-minded person, but you judge everybody who comes your way, you're not actually open-minded because your behavior is not a reflection of your words. So he has given a lot of lip service to, these are the things I want. This is what I don't like. This is where our relationship is. Meanwhile, behaviorally, you have been saying something different. Believe what people do, not just what they say. Protesters and supporters alike are lined up outside the United States Supreme Court this afternoon as a decision in the most hotly debated case in years is set to be delivered. From iHeart Podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case, Roe v. Wade. Sir, I graduated the top quarter of my class. We just don't don't have a spot for you. Starring Maya Hawk as 26-year-old lead attorney Sarah Weddington. for challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee William H. Macy as Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. My chief qualification being, I'm uncontroversial. You know how we both ended up on the Supreme Court? Politics. Damn right. This may be the longest of shots, but it's also the last chance for a lot of women. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. I'm trying to get you to stand for something, man. Now go to it. Listen to Supreme, the battle for Roe on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The podcast Transportista, Who Murdered Captain Coral, tells the story of Colombia's drug wars. After the death of Pablo Escobar, peace was supposed to come to Medellin. But for Beto Coral, it was a peace that never truly arrived. Because his father, Capitan Humberto Coral, was murdered after the final operation against the notorious drug lord. Two sides, criminals and law enforcement, in a battle to the death In the middle, a city full of innocent people. The result? Thousands of forgotten victims. Join host Alvaro Cespedes as he shares the tragic tale of the Coral family caught up in the narcotics wars of the 1990s. The memory of this conflict is still present. The wounds are still open. Colombia is still a country in mourning. Listen to Transportista, Who Murdered Captain Coral? as part of the My Cultura Podcast Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I was seriously trying to understand, and more reasons were floating my way. He told me that neither one of us is more important than the other, that the choice just happened, just landed, but we're both important people in his life. He told me that the reasons for which he chose her are entirely arbitrary and in another version of reality where his circumstances were a little bit different, where I was not a co-worker, for example, maybe it would have been me. And in my mind, I add, maybe if I did go out drinking and dancing with him instead of her, 
maybe it would have been me. And while I know rationally it's not true, the arbitrary nature of it all hurts me tremendously. It's not anything that you aren't. So this whole idea and setup that there are some things present with her that are not present with you, it's not about you. You are an amazing person for someone else. You are great just the way you are for the person who is for you. It may not be this person. Sometimes the people we want don't want us. Sometimes the things that we want are not for us. It doesn't matter how much we want something or how hard we pursue it. It can still not be for us. Some things are not meant to be understood. And what I hear you being challenged with is trying to understand after he said all of these things, oh my gosh, what is his reason? Why would he say these things? What is his score sheet? How is he figuring these things out? I'm not sure you'll get an honest answer. Sometimes, you know, people are not being honest because they're protecting us from the truth. Sometimes they don't even know what it is. But I'm not sure you'll get an honest answer. So how do you stop asking a question that he will not honestly answer for you? And even if he did, it may not make you feel better. You want something that he does not want. In this situation, him giving you some reason as to why he made his decisions, you may not feel better about it. And what we need to start focusing on is how to help you deal with this discomfort, how to help you move through this situation, and how to help you in the future pursue something that is pursuing you. I know that I'm trying to understand something but cannot be understood. Like, I cannot understand how he made that choice because there's probably no rationality in it like he might just like one person more than the other but what hurts isn't just that but that all along I've been hearing one story and 10 days of me forget 10 days but yes 10 days of us not seeing each other was enough to to shatter a long time of us being together and in a meaningful way So when he told me that she's the primary partner and I am an undefined relationship, I started crying uncontrollably and I didn't know where to go. I did not know what to do. I did not know how to process the reality. And frankly, I still don't. Because he tells me he likes me. Sometimes I get a sense that it might be more than just a like. Sometimes... It feels almost like he loves me, although he never told me. I certainly do love him. So I don't know how to reconcile the two realities, one of which is that I like someone and they like me. The feelings are mutual and we have a good time without the shadow of another person between us. It is a truly great time. I don't know how to reconcile that version of the reality with the other one, that he has a primary partner now, entirely out of the blue, and any mention of her, any reference to her, implicit or explicit, hurts me tremendously, to the point where it's it's more than I can handle. I want to be with him, and it hurts like hell. I wonder if I can be in a relationship with someone who likes two people at a time. wonder if that's right. I wonder if that's abusive of him. I wonder if that's fair. I wonder if I'm processing it right. I feel so lost in this version of the reality. And not a single step makes sense to me. Sometimes I think maybe breaking up is the right thing to do, but then A, there is 
no breakup without a relationship. B, why would I want a separation from someone I love, from someone who clearly really likes me, if not loves me? And another part of it is, how can I stay when at the moment, even the thought of him with the other person tears me apart? I would really appreciate some advice. Thank you. I have so many questions for you. Here are a few questions. Is this a relationship you can be in with boundaries? Is this a relationship you can have and be mentally well? What do you want in a relationship? And is that possible with him? All of those questions will lead you toward the answer you need to make for yourself. I heard you mention this isn't a relationship, so how can you break up? Well, it is a relationship. It's just not a committed relationship. Um, I have a relationship with my postal worker. You know, it's the same person. I see them all the time. You know, we have a relationship. It is a relationship of seeing each other. There is an exchange. There is a high and by. It's not a committed relationship. It's not a serious relationship. It's just a, you know, pass by sort of relationship. So it is a relationship that you have. So you can break up. I can't break up with my postal worker, but you can certainly break up this situation that you no longer want to be in. And the breakup looks like, you know, maybe less contact, moving away from, you know, interactions with this person, not answering your phone, having that conversation of, I cannot do this anymore. You can break up in this situation if that's what you decide to do. I hear so much pain and sadness because it's been confusing from the beginning. Here it is, you are getting into this person. You are starting to enjoy their company and like them. And they say, oh my gosh, there's this other person. Yeah, I mean, I can understand how you feel like, what was this? Was this abuse? Was this a game? Is it gaslighting? Is it, what is this situation? I would say, you know, I I can't put a label on it, but I will say it's not anything you consented to. You consented to having a relationship with this person that is full of joy, full of, you know, friendship, full of, you know, possibly commitment. This isn't that right now. So now you have to figure out what you want to do next. You need to hear this, listeners. Sometimes the things that we like don't like us back. It is hard and it is also an unfortunate part of life. When we have relationships with people who are not what we want them to be, they cannot offer us the things that are healthy for us. They are consistently impacting our mental health. We have to make hard choices. You know, it becomes a them or us situation. Sometimes it is the healthiest thing to choose yourself and maybe not a relationship that causes you more pain. Maybe it is, you know, a time for you to reevaluate what you want your relationships to look like. Here's the thing. This is your life. You get to decide, and I know we feel like, oh my gosh, there is a right answer to all of this. There is not. There is the answer, there is the path, there is the decision that you make. It is an opportunity for you to decide how you want to feel in your relationships, all of your relationships. How do I want to feel in my relationships? Is this relationship leading me to feel in a way that I want to live with? Think about that. How healthy are your relationships for you? Are they impacting your mental health in a negative way? 
are they impacting your mental health in a positive way? That helps with your decision making. Is this relationship good for my mental health? You Need to Hear This is an iHeart production hosted by me, Nedra Glover Tawab. Our executive producer is Joelle Bonique. Our senior producer and editor is Mia Dawn Taylor. Send us a voice memo with your questions about boundaries and relationships at you need to hear this at iHeartMedia.com. Please be sure to rate our show wherever you listen to it and share this episode with someone who needs to hear this. Talk to you next time. From iHeart Podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, tells the story of the unlikely champions behind the landmark case, Roe v. Wade. Starring Maya Hawk as 26-year-old lead attorney, Sarah Weddington. We're challenging the Texas abortion laws in federal court. And Academy Award nominee, William H. Macy, as Supreme Court Justice, Harry Blackman. Time is not the most important factor. Getting it right is. Listen to the podcast, Supreme, the battle for Roe, on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. The War Within, the Robert Bale story, is a podcast that unpacks the controversial crimes of an American soldier, anchored by exclusive interviews with the man himself. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I am wrong. But you have to understand the way it went down. The series aims to answer lingering questions around what happened one tragic night in Afghanistan. Bale's actions are merely a symptom of a broken army. Listen to The War Within on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.